This isn't a love story, although love plays a pivotal role. This isn't a sex story, although sex was most certainly somehow involved. <laughs> this is a story about two virgins planning it out months in advance. Because as love songs and sonnets have always suggested, nothing makes the first time more romantic than meticulous planning. <laughs> it all started, like most of these things do, at the Cheesecake Factory. I was 20 years old at the time, and having this sort of conversation felt safer in a restaurant where I could have cheesecake, spaghetti, and shrimp tacos all in the same meal. <laughs> Options should stay open. At this point, my girlfriend and I had been dating for two years, and we were both ready to finally partake in the devil's deed, the forbidden dance, or as my Uncle Brian for some reason always called it, Santa's last present. <laughs> Your final gift before you stop believing in magic. <laughs> we were both virgins and we both had separate reasons for staying that way into age 20. You see, I was raised Irish Catholic, which puts recreational sex on the same list as murder or turning in a priest. <laughs> you just don't do it, unless you tell it to a priest in detail. Really? That's where I lost you? A lot of Mormons in this room. All right. <laughs> At this point in my life, the idea of real person sex was actually scary. My friends had all begun to take it to the next level, but I was endlessly convinced that if I did, I'd actually have real person sex before marriage, I'd be condemning my soul to hell, my partner's soul to hell, my mom's soul, and whoever would dare look at me in the eyes ever again. We'd all be damned to hell, and they all know why. <laughs> sure, I'd done some sex stuff, like lots of things. I mean, I could kickflip in front of girls, so I'd done some sex shit, all right? <laughs> but it was all sleepover camp type stuff. And let's face it, I had more stories about back row movie theater HJs than I probably knew what to do with. As I reached my teens and fell further away from the church, I realized sex was something I definitely wanted to do and was not going to wait till marriage to do it. But, and this is so cheesy, we might all have to leave the building after I say it so the floors can be power washed, I wanted sex to be with someone special. I did! <laughs> Blame it on my religious upbringing, or hearing friends audibly regret previous partners, or just purely being an emotional little angel boy who would, and still does, let every little move or touch dictate everything that happens for the rest of time. <laughs> but the girl I'd been dating was special. We'd been together for a long time and we loved each other. We talked about being married. We talked about kids and all the things you're supposed to talk about in year two of dating. At some point, I don't know when, one of us brought it up. Doing it. Doing sex. Of course I wanted to, but she wanted to. And that was completely ridiculous to me. Why would anyone want to have sex with me? Honestly, why? Why would someone want to commit the ultimate sin and waste it on somebody that wasn't the most important person on earth? Sure, it feels good, I had heard, but why would a girl, nay, a woman, want my weird thingy near her weird thingy? I mean, we pee out of these things for God's sake. Speaking of God, should we pray about this? I mean, neither one of us were religious at that point, obviously, we were about to sin so hard, but... All of this seems like just too much. Like she'd seen my wiener and she wanted it. None of this made sense to me. My girlfriend sensed my resistance based on decades of indoctrination and decided to counter it with the only thing equal to the power of God's judgment, Oreo cheesecake. We sat there and we began to form a plan. We'd start a little slow so that no one got too excited too quickly and let all the fireworks off at once. We'd move closer to the actual act and ease into this new territory. It was all very practical. And boy, does nothing turn on the faucet like a mental Excel spreadsheet to at some point spread the sheets. <laughs> we decided that we would do it in two months. I still lived at home, 
And she was off at college with one of those roommates that never wanted to leave the room. So a neutral location was needed and a hotel room would be purchased. We didn't know where, but some research would be done. We couldn't get a room locally because what if someone recognized us and knew we were about to or had just come from adult wrestling? <laughs> but my girlfriend had gotten me tickets to see The Cure at Irvine Meadows in two months. This is great. The timeline works, we'd be in Irvine, and The Cure is one of my favorite bands. We'd go to the concert, then stay the night at a hotel in Irvine. Perfect. Settled. Sex. <laughs> I can't tell you how hard it was, not that, to walk around knowing <laughs> that this was going to happen at some point in around 45 days from now. Why we chose such a distant timeline, I don't totally know. Sure, there was a solid plan, but I can only assume we also did it thinking the anticipation would help alleviate the pressure. And now that I say that sentence, I realize how dumb it sounds. But boy, did it make sense to a kid whose other favorite band at the time was Real Big Fish. Pick it up, wait. That's a ska joke for four people. The opposite began to happen. The anticipation wasn't alleviating pressure, it was only creating it more and more. So much so that we began to do something we'd never done before, argue about everything. We didn't have some perfect relationship, but we definitely never yelled or screamed at each other, and now we were doing it multiple times a week. I know there's an age-old trope that the more intense the fight, the more intense the makeup sex, but our sex was scheduled for a month away. So at this point, it'd be so intense that one of us would probably end up dead. We fought about where we were going to eat, the way I drove, the air conditioning, which all in all sounds fairly cutesy, and who cares? But after a few weeks, the fights became about the future and where we were going to live, my career choices, when I'd move out of my mom's house, and on and on. Then one night, we went to a movie, and before the movie, she turned to me and said, I need more from you. Now, if you've ever been in a relationship, you know this is not even an argument or a discussion. This is a statement of separation without paperwork. <laughs> you can't win, you just lose. But if you care enough, you do try to be better or do better or be more. And I loved her. Plus our sex time was now just two weeks away. Plus the cure, there was so much at stake. <laughs> As a 20 year old boy, you don't know what needing more means. I mean, women do, holy shit do they know. That's why they're smarter than us. I'm pretty sure it's just a test on their end to say it and see how we react. Like when a pitcher hits a batter or your two-year-old falls down, what comes next, no matter what it is, will either be right or wrong and only they know the answer. <laughs> when we find out if we passed or failed could be days or months later, but we will find out. I got her flowers almost every day. I never argued. I just tried to keep it all together. It seemed impossible to me that we could go from purely in love to the verge of ending everything in just a month. But as they say, Sex changes everything. Just would have been nice to have had the sex. <laughs> Despite it all, we did make it to Irvine. Her parents were visiting her at college in Santa Barbara, so they drove her down, and then I would drive her back after the, you know, the dirty stuff. We decided to get dinner before the concert at the Irvine Spectrum Mall, so we met at the Cheesecake Factory. Her dad was there when I showed up. We said our hellos, and then he stared at me like I had just stolen money from him and lied about it. Why did he look so angry? Why was he staring at me? Oh no, he figured it out. He knew what we were doing there. He had to. As soon as he left, I immediately asked, does he know? She looked at me like I had just stolen money from her dad and lied about it. <laughs> of course he doesn't know. There was no playfulness, no smiling. She looked sad. I felt awful and we ordered in silence. I was nervous and weirded out that she looked so unhappy to be there. And since I was nervous, I took full advantage of the Cheesecake Factory's wide variety of food. We got two appetizers. I got steak medallions. Then I got a piece of cheesecake with ice cream. I was eating my feelings and she just stared at me. We barely said a full sentence to each other the entire meal. No mention of the food, the show, and especially no mention of the sex we were supposed to have in just a few hours. The meal was over and we drove to the amphitheater for the cure, in silence. When we made it to our seats, I was getting pretty excited. I'd never seen the cure in concert. They're in my top five, five favorite bands of all time, and they have about 25 of the most amazingly perfect pop songs ever written. 
They were on tour to support their recently released album called Blood Flowers, which followed a pattern where after releasing an album with a few hits, Wild Mood Swings, they followed up with a slog of 10 to 12 tracks. They were on par with falling asleep to someone playing sitar while they recapped the movie Edward Scissorhands to you. I was ready for the hits, but my girlfriend seemed to be in a haze, so I said, is everything okay? She said we'd talk after the concert. I don't want to push too hard. I just wanted to enjoy the show and possibly try to enjoy the sex that seemed less and less likely by the minute. <laughs> the Cure opened with Close to Me, which is not only a song all of you have heard and will continue to hear until you die, but one of my favorite Cure songs. After the song, two things happened. One, they started to play Blood Flowers in its entirety. 10 songs with an average CD length of six minutes apiece, but they're live, so here comes the solos and the vamping, and holy shit, they're playing this fucking album in its entirety, aren't they? <laughs> Boredom immediately set in, and something else started setting in. All the food I'd been eating in the last two hours had started to make me feel less than great, <laughs> and I needed to use the restroom. Whatever uncomfortable situation I was already in just became infinitely more uncomfortable. Now, there are rules about using the bathroom proper in a concert venue. Just like gas stations or a Walmart, you don't do it. You either hold it in or you die trying. But my stomach, nay, my entire body was betraying me and I was sweating a lot. After what felt like an hour, the cure had reached the fourth song and I couldn't take it any longer. I braved the cold. Now, I'm going to spare you the dirty details here. But let's just say, while I was in the stall, I was asked several times if everything was okay. <laughs> it wasn't. Nothing was. When I finally found my way back to our seats, my girlfriend couldn't help notice that I'd been gone for a while. She'd seen all I'd eaten. She knew what had happened. She asked, are you doing all right? It was the most she'd said to me in hours. So I replied with, yes, but we may be asked to leave the venue. She smiled, and for a brief moment, I felt like maybe we'd be okay. The Cure finally finished Blood Flowers, and my girlfriend woke up. <laughs> she fell asleep. A lot of people did. The band might have. They then played Fright I Am In Love, which was my girlfriend's favorite Cure song, and then they left. No encore. Done. We got into my car to head out, and the subject of doing sex was nowhere in the forefront. I told her I could just take her home to her parents if she wanted. She agreed that that would be best, and then the heavens opened up with a downpour unlike anything I'd seen before. Thunder, lightning, rain so heavy you couldn't see 10 feet in front of you. Maybe we just go to the hotel afterwards? My, after all, my girlfriend said. I agreed. In my mind, either God was commanding us to get our sin on, or he was also just unbelievably pissed The Cure only played two hits, no encore, and his only way to get revenge was by trapping the band in Irvine. <laughs> a mile down the road was the Double Tree Hotel I had booked a month previous. We sat on the bed watching TV. My girlfriend broke the silence. I was gonna break up with you tonight. Why, I asked. I don't know, she replied. This whole sex thing really screwed things up. It just got me so confused. It was all just too much. I agreed, and we hugged. She then said she didn't want to have sex anymore. And I said, damn, I hadn't even had a chance to be bad at it yet. <laughs> she stared at me blankly. Then I stared at her. Then she did a little smirk. Somehow, this joke turned her on more than anything I'd ever done before. <laughs> and we were off. I'm going to spare you the dirty details here, but let's just say it was awful. <laughs> Downright terrible for both of us. In fact, I'm not sure we even did it right or at all. I think we did, but we didn't have an impartial judge to weigh in. When it was finally all over and we did whatever it was we did, we both agreed we still might be virgins. <laughs> However, we also agreed that parts got close enough to each other and for long enough that at least publicly we could check off the box. 
Given the events of the evening, there was no trying again that night. And in the morning, we talked about it, but ultimately decided it'd be best to shower and go. We started the drive back to Santa Barbara, and just like in some low-rent American Pie movie, we started talking again, laughing, listening to music, like a huge weight had been lifted or released into a now torn-down amphitheater bathroom. <laughs> About 30 minutes... <laughs> there it is. One person got it. About 30 minutes outside of her school, we stopped at a coffee shop that looked out at the ocean. And I said, I do love you. And she said, I love you. But do you ever think we're just better friends? I stared at her blankly. She stared at me. And just like in some low-rent American Pie sequel, 15 minutes later, with the Cure songs playing that I wanted to hear, we were in the backseat of my car trying again. <laughs> It'd be fitting to say that things worked out for her and I, sexually or relationship-wise, but we never got consistently comfortable having real people sex. And we just seemed to float along together for another four years. What started when I was 18 years old as the last relationship I thought I'd ever be in just never found its stride again after the Cheesecake Factory debacle. We tempted the Lord, and we lost. <laughs> I could blame a lot of people, and honestly, it's probably the cure's fault. But in the very end of it all, we once again found ourselves in my car after a Valentine's dinner at the Outback Steakhouse, her choice, <laughs> with her once again saying, I need more from you. And this time I replied, you ever think we're just better friends? Roll the credits. Give it up for Dallas McLaughlin.